am I a loser? It is easy to focus upon what other people say about you. The opinions of our accusers can leave us feeling like losers rather than like children of God. When we see ourselves as failures, it is helpful to remember Jesus stands by us, for us, and in us. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 18. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Let's pray. Jesus, sometimes I feel like a failure. Sometimes I forget you are with me. Today, teach me how to be a rock like Peter was and fill me with your love. Amen. Amen. That is pretty cool, okay? I love that. Um, that's Gage uh, Gartrell, uh, one of our faithful Saturday night guys. Um, and his mother reminded me that when I was appointed here um, by the bishop about seven years ago, uh, I could have held Gage in my arms like this. So the boy has grown up, and uh, now he's reading the Word of God for us and leading us in prayer. That's amazing what happens when you raise a child in a church family. It's just amazing kind of thing. So I rejoice in that, and um, thank you, from Micah, for putting that together. That is a great thing. Well, Rocky was not all that careful about the way he put his words together. He just kind of blurted things out. So there were quite a few times when he had to ask forgiveness for something that sounded harsh or unkind or even a bit mean. One time it was so bad that, that Jesus told Rocky he was no better than Satan himself. But at least Rocky spoke up. Several of his most spiritual friends just kept quiet when they saw someone who was being treated unfairly. And many of those same people, well, they never quite got around to telling anyone about the love of Jesus. But that wasn't the case for Rocky. He called out the oppressors and the perpetrators and the bullies. He stood up for the hungry and the sick and the hopeless. He cared for those who were sad, those who were afraid, and those who were broken. So when Jesus asked the apostles who people were saying that he was, it's a little surprising that it's not Rocky who speaks up first. It's actually some of the other apostles. They say that most people believe that Jesus is a great preacher. Or if he's not a great preacher, at least he's a great person of faith. Jesus, not being entirely satisfied with that answer, kind of presses the point a little bit and asks the question in a more personal way. Jesus asks, but who do you say I am? Now this time, everyone just stood there in silence. And, and I think part of the reason why they stood there in silence is because they understood that this is the most important question that any one of us could attempt to answer. Who do you say Jesus is? The problem was they didn't know how to really answer the question. That's a problem for those of us who've 
hung around churches for a long time. We tend to focus on giving the correct theological answer rather than giving an answer that just kind of naturally flows out of our heart. And to be sure, if we've been raised around the church for a while, we have good theology. We do. We have good theology. And we have good, sound doctrine. And and we even have words that sound real churchy and religious. That's a good thing. But when all of those words finally find a place to land, we still may not be able to answer the question, who do I say Jesus is? Now, one of the reasons I think we struggle with answering the questions is that we've never quite made the connection between who Jesus is and how we live our lives. Let me say it another way. We kind of have Jesus over here in one compartment, and then over here we have like our job. Or or we have our school, or we have our sports, or we have our marriage, or we have our parenting. And and we kind of keep them each in different compartments that way. We don't have them integrated. We don't have them connected in some way. And so all that theology and all that doctrine and all that Bible study that we've done, somewhere in the midst of that, we've missed something important. You see, part of the answer to the question, who do I say Jesus is, is about living in relationship with Jesus every day so that he is a part of my job. He is a part of my school. He is a part of my sports. He's a part of my parenting in that way. Well, Jesus asked this question, Who do people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And now it's Rocky that breaks the awkward silence. He's the only one with enough love for Jesus in that moment to stick his neck out. He's the only one with enough faith to take a chance on living with Jesus right now. And so Rocky answers Jesus in this way. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. I just want to tell you, from a theological point of view, we could spend the next three, four hours trying to take that apart and really understanding what it, what it means to us. But just let me say it in this way. Rocky knows that Jesus is the Savior. Not one of the saviors, but he knows that Jesus is the Savior. Also, what that statement means is that Rocky knows that Jesus is the only Son of God. Not one of many sons of God, but Jesus is the only son of God. And Rocky also knows this. He knows that the Lord is alive. You see, the problem for many of the people in the first century, and I think for many of us in the 21st century, is that we worship gods that are dead. Gods that have no life. Rocky knows our God is a living God. Well, that's his answer. And in in the same sense as Rocky and those apostles and all the crowds that were following Jesus, all of them at some point have to answer this question, who do I say Jesus is? Now, that's important for our salvation. It's important for our sense of forgiveness. It's important for joy and hope in our life. But there's another reason why answering that question is important. Until we can answer the question, Who do I say Jesus is? I can't really come up with an answer for the question, who do I say that I am? It's a tough question, really. On the one hand, it's often difficult to get past what what we think that other people want us to say is an answer to that question, or, or it may even be difficult to get past what we think Jesus might want us to say as an answer to that question. But here's the point. Until we can answer the question, who do I say that Jesus is? I'm never going to come up with the right answer for the question, who do I say that I am? You see, our identity, our worth, our purpose, our calling in life can never be separated from Jesus. So I, I, wanna, I want you to kind of use your imagination a little bit here and, and, and maybe begin to take a, a first step in this direction. If I were to ask you the question, who do you say that you are? 
Who do I say that I am? What would be your answer today? What would it be? Now, don't be too quick to answer because we really need to go deep before we can answer that question. We need to listen real, real carefully. We need to be incredibly honest with ourselves. Now, I don't know in this crowd of people, but you could go into a, a certain size of crowd and, and some of the answers would come back like this. Who do I say that I am? I am addicted. I am unfaithful. Or I am fired. It's another way of saying I'm a loser. Or, or maybe I would say I'm greedy or I'm petty. Or I'm bitter. Or maybe our answer might be, I'm dishonest. I'm devious. I'm broken. Just all kind of different ways of defining ourselves as a loser. You see, our answer to the question, who do I say that I am, can be extraordinarily uncomfortable. And where it leads us, if we don't come up with, well, with the honest answer, God's answer to that question, then we conclude that we're unlovable, we're unforgivable, we're unworthy, we're unqualified. You see, we have to answer the question first, who do I say that Jesus is? Before I can come up with the right answer to the question, who do I say that I am? This last week, I was invited to a Christmas dinner. I was feeling physically tired and emotionally depleted. In other words, I was pooped and whooped, okay? I just didn't have a lot left in me. But someone announced that it was game time. And you know that I am a very competitive person, so uh, that just started to rise up in me. And as that competitive spirit came up, my energy level just came up real, real high. The first gameplay involved blowing up a balloon, and then the second one was tying a knot in that balloon to hold the air in. Well, I guarantee you, I probably had my balloon inflated before anybody else did because I'm a winner, right? Right? Of course, that would be the way it is. Then it came time for the second step, which is tying the knot in the balloon. And I tried, and it slipped out of my fingers. So I did it again. I tried it, and I couldn't get my thumb out. So again, it didn't work. And I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I tried. I kept trying until I noticed that there were three or four of the other teams who were already completely done. They were all the winners, and I still didn't have a knot in my balloon. I gave up. I gave up at that point. Now, let's uh, see a picture of what the winners look like, okay? You have that? Okay, can you see those winners there? Okay, they're pretty clever. All right, well, when you fail that badly, it's easy to conclude that I'm a loser. Now, my head told me that I was not a loser, right? My head told me I was not a loser, but because I was already physically exhausted and emotionally kind of depleted, there was something in me that just kind of released that, and I concluded that I was a, a loser. And just let me tell you, when you get yourself too tired, too mentally exhausted, too emotionally tired. It is so easy to go to this place and answer the question, who do I say that I am, with the answer, I'm a loser. It's easy to get there. It happens to all of us. And when it does, we get focused uh, upon how we see ourselves rather than how Jesus sees us. You see, we have to go back to this again. Until I can answer the question, who do I say that Jesus is, I'm never going to come up with the right answer to the question, who do I say that I am? It's good that Christmas is here, right? It's good that Christmas is here because there's some good news in this for us on those days when we feel like we're a loser. You see, because Christmas provides us an opportunity to choose what I want to believe about Jesus and what I want to believe about myself. So, think about this. We can look at all of our failures, our disappointments, and our pain, and we can choose to give up. Or, we can look into the face of the Son of God lying in a feed bunk and see that we have a future with hope. 
We can choose to believe that we're a loser or worse, or we can choose to open our hearts to a new beginning through our Savior who's born in Bethlehem. We can choose to believe all the voices out there and around us that tell us that we are unlovable, that we're unforgivable, that we're unworthy, that we'll never measure up. Or we can listen to the Word of God telling us that we are loved by the very Son of God. In the birth of Jesus, in the birth of Jesus, at this Christmas, we can discover the answer to the question, who do I say Jesus is? Look back to the old prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. The preacher describes the coming of the Savior as a child. This is what he writes. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulder, and he is named, here it comes, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Who do I say that Jesus is? Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's a good start, right? But let's turn over and let's look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And this is the angel who is speaking to Joseph. You know Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus? This is Joseph, okay? And the angel is talking to Joseph and says this to him. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him God is with us. Who do I say that Jesus is? Just based on Isaiah and the angel of the Lord, one answer might be this. Jesus is the living God who lives with us. Now, in the birth of Jesus, we also discover the answer to the question, who do I say that I am? John chapter 1, verse 12. We hear these words, but to all who received Jesus, who believed in Jesus' name, Jesus gave power to become, what? Children of God. Who do I say that I am? If I really understand who Jesus is, then my answer to who do I say that I am is I am a precious child of God. You see, the birth of Christ invites you to stop focusing on who you are not and what you cannot do and the time you failed so badly and and the person who hurt you so deeply. The birth of the Savior invites you to start listening to the dream that the Son of God has for you because you are a precious child of God. Jesus is the Savior born in Bethlehem to forgive a sinner and to save a lost person and to transform a loser. Good news. Good news. Let us pray. Am I posing? There are times in each of our lives when we...